Hi, this is Mr. Rubenstein, and I'm going to take you through a series of tutorials to go through the June 2008 Math B Regions exam. Now, you should get a copy of that exam handy, and you can get that by going to this website, www.nysedregions.org. You could type Regions Archive into Google, and you can come to that. And then you can navigate to the Math B section and get that exam. And to get the most out of this tutorial, it's best if you do the exam yourself first. Anyway, let's take a look. Part 1, question number 1 says here, uh, for which value of x is f of x equals 1 over 27 minus 3 to the x undefined? And there's four choices. Well, a question like this, a fraction is undefined when the denominator equals 0. So what they're asking you to do here is to solve the equation 27 minus 3 to the x equals 0. And you solve that by adding 3 to the x to both sides. And you get 3 to the x equals 27. And then by trial and error, you'll get x equals 3, which should be choice number 3. Moving on to question number 2. Question number 2 here <coughs> says, oops, question number 2 says in the accompanying diagram circle O, A, B, and B, C are chords, and measure of angle A, O, C is 96 degrees. They want to know what's the measure of, of angle A, B, C. Well, <clears throat> because A, O, C is a 96 degree angle, that makes A, C a 96 degree arc, because central angle always has the same degree measure as the arc. Well, angle A, B, C is called an inscribed angle, and it's always half the intercepted arc, which is the same arc AC. So arc AC is 96 degrees. Therefore, angle ABC is half of that, which is 48, which is choice two. Question number three. Kathy de deposits $25 into her investment account with an annual rate of 5% compounded annually. The amount in her account can be determined by the formula A equals P times 1 plus R to the T power, where P is the amount deposited, R is the annual interest rate, and T is the number of years the money is invested. If she makes no other deposits or withdrawals, how much money will be in her account at the end of 15 years? Well, they give you the formula. So all you have to do is plug the numbers into the formula. The formula was A A equals P times 1 plus R to the T power. Um, they're asking how much will you have if you put $25, that's P. The interest rate is 5%, so that's 1 plus 0 0.05, which is 1.05. And then we put the money in for 15 years, so that's the T value. Now the thing to watch out for here is not to multiply the 25 times the 1.05. I'll bring up a calculator to do 1.05 to the 15th power. On this one, I guess you go 1.05 raised to the 15th power. And we get this number. 2.08 approximately. Finally, we multiply that number times 25. To get our answer, 51.97, which was 
choice number three. Moving on to question number four, it says here the company state, company graph shows the uh, elevation of a certain region in New York State as a hiker travels along a trail. And they want to know what's the domain. Well, the domain are all the x values of all the points on the graph. So uh, zero is the leftmost x value, and um, 12 is the rightmost x value. That's why this one is choice 3. 0 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 12. If they ask for the range, that would be the y values, which is 1,000 up to 1,500. That would, that would be choice uh, 2. Moving on to question 5, they want to know which of these four relations is a function. Now, if you have a graph of a function of a relation, you can tell if it's a function or not. For instance, if you have uh, f of x equals x squared, and what makes a relation a function is that for any x value, there's only one y value corresponding to it. So we call it the vertical line test is a way you, is a way you check if there's any point on a, if there's any spot where you could draw a vertical line that would intersect more than one point, then the relation would not be a function. So a parabola is a function. Now let's look at the choices they have here. X squared plus y squared equals 16. X squared plus y squared equals 16 is the graph of that is a circle with center 0, 0, and radius 4. As you can see, there are a lot of places where it would fail the vertical line test. So that one is not a function. Choice 2. 2x squared plus 6y squared equals 1. Well, what you need to know about this one is if there are coefficients here and they're different, the graph of this thing is going to be an ellipse. And any ellipse is going to be similar to the way a circle is. It's going to uh, fail the vertical line test. The third choice, uh, y squared equals x squared plus 3x minus 4. Uh, this one's actually going to be a hyperbola. If, if you move everything over to one side, You'll have a positive y squared and a negative x squared. And when you graph that, that would become some kind of hyperbola. Uh, th those kinds of hyperbolas look either like this or sometimes they look like this. Either way, they fail vertical line test. Uh, the only choice left is choice 4. And choice 4 is uh, quadratic. It graphs as a parabola. And parabolas do pass the vertical line test. And that's why this one is the graph of a function. Question 6 here asks you to do what's called composition of functions. What's f of g of negative 3? So what we're going to do is we're going to put negative 3 into the g function. Uh, g of negative 3, since g of x is 1 minus square root of 1 minus x, let's see. So g of negative 3 is the square root of 1 minus negative 3, which is the same thing as the square root of 1 plus 3, which is the square root of 4, which is 2. So, so f of g of negative 3 is the same thing as f of 2. f of 2 is 2 squared plus 4, which equals 8.